Hello and welcome to this 11th of January 2013th, another issue of the Health Research Report, which we're going to go through four articles. First one is hold the diet soda, sweetened drinks and sweetened diet drinks linked to depression. Second one, high fiber diet prevents prostate cancer progression. Doesn't stop the prostate cancer, but you get it, it just doesn't go anywhere. Why Asians in Asia that get prostate cancer don't seem to have any problems, but in the U.S. it seems to increase. Three, H. pylori, not as bad as you think, especially when it comes to lung cancer and stroke. And number four, which was a surprise even to me because I didn't think of the relationship, high fructose corn syrup directly correlated with causing, I should say causing, at least in their words, autism or at least a large piece of the puzzle. All right, to start, number one, hold the diet soda, sweetened drinks linked to depression, coffee tied to lower risk. This was printed in the American Academy of Neurology's 65th annual meeting in San Diego, or we present, I should say, in March 16th to 23rd, 2013. What they did is they went through 10 years and looked at 11,311 cases of diagnosed depression out of 263,925. That's a lot of looking. Those who drank four cans or cups a day of soda, I assume what they mean here is a sweetened or a sweet tasting diet soda. They're not really looking at the sugar content ironically. Had a 30% increase in likelihood of having depression. Those who drank four cans of fruit punch per day, which fruit punch in a can to me growing up was always pretty disgusting. That's enough to cause depression. Was 38% more likely to cause depression. So it's kind of interesting. You think of depression as just being something here. And I understand. There's a lot of things out there which can make you depressed from an emotional standpoint. But at the same type time, a lot of things can make you depressed from a diet standpoint, often we look at what's happening out here. We don't look at what we're putting in here is causing what's happening here. And now we'll go back to our last article on high fructose corn syrup. All right. Now, another thing we put in here. High fiber diet prevents prostate cancer progression. This was done in the January 2013, I should say printed, in the January 2013 Cancer Prevention Research. All right, what they did is they're trying to figure literally out why cancer progresses so much faster in the U.S. than it does in Asia. And they linked it down to fiber. But one important element of fiber called inoxitol hexaphosphate, otherwise known as IP6, what they said, which is a major comp component of a fiber diet, says we saw dramatically reduced tumor volume is primarily due to the anti-angiogenic effect of IP6. Look at that prostate cancer. Basically feeding the active ingredient of a high fiber diet kept prostate tumors from making new blood vessels they needed to supply themselves with energy. Without this energy, prostate cancers could not grow. Likewise, Treatment with IP6 slowed the rate at which prostate cancers metabolize glucose. So it basically, it's like a car taking the wheels off the car. And that's kind of what it is. The riding on axles are not really going too far, or too fast, or going actually anywhere that's going to make a difference in one person's lifetime. So, interesting aspect. Next time you talk to an oncologist or urologist in regards to this, ask them about IP6. It's not like something just comes out of a health food store per se. Again, documented from the basically the 2013 Journal of Cancer Prevention Research. It's what they do. It's their living. There's not a lot of money at IP6, so it's fiber. It's dime a dozen stuff. But why not? Your life's on the line. Why not? It's cheap. Why do you have to buy the most expensive thing or most complicated thing out there? Don't overcomplicate a simple issue. And they said, too, this could explain the difference in prostate cancer progression rates. But now it seems the difference may not be genetic, but dietary. Asian cultures get IP6, whereas Western cultures generally do not. It's called fiber. All right. So we go to the next article. 
This one is called Disappearing Bacterium and May protect, protect Against Stroke. Now to back it up here, I'll give a little bit of caveat. This has to do with Heliopactor pylori, or H. pylori. Now they looked at the death rates that were about the same because what happens is H. pylori can still cause gastric cancers. However, there was a caveat. Those with the most active form of H. pylori had a dramatically reduced chance of stroke and lung cancer. So before you go take an antibiotics to try to kill H. pylori off, look at your family history and look if it's conducive to your genetic or epigenetic uh, history. All right, this was published in the online January 9th version of Gut. Creative title. So the individuals carrying the most virulent strain of H. pylori, the study found had a 55% reduced risk of death from stroke compared with the counterparts who were not infected with H. pylori. Participants with the most virulent strain of stroke, the virulent strain of stroke, virulent strain also had a 45% risk, reduced risk of death from lung cancer. And keep in mind, H. pylori, from an evolutionary standpoint, is also shown to protect against childhood asthma. Now, this is fairly new. So what may appear bad actually may be good. And the fortunate part is when we go to take something out, we really don't look at the whole picture. We don't look at a small microcosm. So before you go knock on H. pylori, look at the whole picture. All right. Now we go to another part of the picture, which is called nutrigenomics, or the whole picture. The reason being, an article called, in a scientific way, a macroepigenetic approach to identify factors responsible for the autism epidemic in the United States. This was done in April of 2012, for whatever reason, went under the radar. Now, what they like to do has looked at different clues of what could be causing problems. <sighs> they looked at basically at Europe, especially Italy, and they noticed that high fructose corn syrup is barely consumed. Yet autism rates are also barely available, I mean barely there. Even though there's coal mines and mercury exposure and lead exposure and heavy metal exposure, still the autism rates are very minimal compared to the United States. So they had to look at all the factors. And the thing they looked at was nutrition. Now, we go back to this. Basically, they found high fructose corn syrup had a direct correlation with autism in the U.S. So says the Clinical Journal of Epigenetics 2012. And I'm only going to go through an excerpt here. This is a long study, but I'm going to break a few things down. The highlights is basically, well, it's not even highlighted yet. Let's go back to this. It says, resulted in contradictory scientific conclusions when they're looking at basically just everything else. When practitioners do not consider the dietary factors that interact and modulate the molecular genetic mechanisms underlying the human metabolism and brain function, despite the existence of literature from the field of nutrigenomics. What they're trying to say is, they're looking for a reason internally why your genes are screwed up. They're not looking at what you're putting in your mouth that could be screwing up your genes, and basically, not only that, screwing up the genes of your lineage to be. They're just looking for some sort of defect, not possibly thinking that you could be causing the defect by your frickin' diet. Now, we go to this. As I go through a few pages, and this, trust me, this is the reduced version. They found out that high fructose corn syrup, for whatever reason, interfered with the elimination of heavy metals and a few processes of elimination of heavy metals and other toxins. And this one, for example, before I continue to on, is called methylthionine, or the MT gene. I may have just butchered the name. But which synthesizes the zinc-dependent metal binding protein, uh, methylthionine, uh, thioene. says with dietary zinc, because the high fructose corn syrup, whatever it is, depletes the zinc and copper gain, because zinc usually keeps copper in balance. When you eliminate zinc, copper begins to build from the consumption of high fructose corn syrup. The metabolic process required to eliminate heavy metals are impaired in children with autism. Mercury has been found. Mercury has 
been found, and this has been validated by other studies. In samples of high fructose corn syrup, it is allowed in HFCS. In certain amounts of food colors, da 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 da, not to exceed one part per million. Good luck in validating that. Mercury and specific heavy metals, including lead, copper, cadmium, silver, and bismuth, are all capable of displacing the zinc uh, atom in the MT protein molecule. The other thing I mentioned prior it says the mac this macro epigenetic model proposes that autism prevalence in is related to the consumption of high fructose corn syrup and the overall exposure to mercury in the U.S. And they also said too, where in Italy and places of the world they really consume it. We consumed in 2009 35.7 pounds alone in one year, average per capita of every man, woman, and child, baby, infant, and so on and so forth in the U.S. So we're just down in the stuff that best do up by a ton. 35.7 pounds. Break that down per day. That's not all sweeteners. That's just high fructose corn syrup. It says, basically, the annual consumption of high fructose corn syrup coincided with the peak growth rates of autism in California. Interesting. So the more we consumed, the higher the autism rates went up. The mercury toxicity model shows the high fructose corn syrup characteristics most likely contributing to autism include the zinc depleting effects that comes from consuming high fructose corn syrup in certain food colors and processed foods, and including the mercury that's in the high fructose corn syrup itself. This model can be expanded to include additional adverse effects with the consumption of high fructose corn syrup, likely to contribute to the development of autism. And one is called the PON1 gene. And basically it's a, para op, a paraoxinase enzyme, which is responsible for taking pesticides out of the body. Because, or I should say like nerve gas. It's most pesticides are based upon the old nerve gas formula, paraoxinase. And so when you eliminate that, an unhealthy diet with a high fructose corn syrup and the 95 pounds of pesticide uh, laden wheat and so on and so forth on a regular basis, all of a sudden all the enzyme systems that the body is designed to detox begin to break down and start creating neurological effects because that's what a pesticide or mercury tend to do. They affect the nervous system and the brain. And they said too, most likely with the consumption of high fructose corn syrup, it displaces or lowers the magnesium levels, which also then lowers the calcium levels and phosphorus levels, adversely affecting the, the, affecting the macro mineral homeostasis in the body. And they just say, go on. It says, insufficient intake of dietary calcium, magnesium, and zinc, or losses of displacement of any minerals from the consumption of high fructose corn syrup, may further enhance the toxicity of another toxin, lead on cognitive and behavioral development in children. And it goes on and on and on, and they notice that the higher levels in the blood and the umbilical cord of autistic children, for example, have higher levels of pesticides, organic phosphates in their body, which result in a drop in IQ. So, I can go through all these pages, going through the basically on how it's not used in the rest of the world and the autism levels are lower, but I want to kick right to the chase. When high fructose corn syrup is consumed, all of a sudden, all the mercury and metals and pesticides that are in everything around you have a dramatically increased effect on the body. From vaccines, in their words, to dental amalgams, to chloralkali products, to seafood consumption, to inhalation, to, from geographic location, next to whatever, all of a sudden now, high fructose corn syrup disables the body's defenses, and these begin to build and take a massive impact on the body itself. So you think about it. A little bit of high fructose corn syrup in some kids' food, then you get a, a vaccine that may still contain thymerosal, which is, or for example, inorganic or organic mercury, and now you've developed the perfect storm. Deactivate the body's ability to detoxify these metals, and then introduce the metal which would not be harmful normally into the child's neurological system. So, as they go on, it also affects methionine synthesis, uh, which ends up damaging more things, uh, the chronic exposure, of course, to fructose, and the pesticide combination, da-da-da, da-da-da, 
you get the clue and I go to their conclusion because I want to keep it pure and not give my opinion and let you judge for yourself if high fructose corn syrup really is just another name for sugar. They say, quote, consumption of high fructose corn syrup may lead to mineral imbalances, including zinc, calcium, potassium, and copper gain, and its potential source of inorganic mercury exposure, because, as I said before, where is the mercury? In the high fructose corn syrup. These mineral imbalances create multiple pathways for oxidative stress in the brain from exposure to organophosphate pesticides and heavy metals, such as lead or mercury. Inorganic mercury and fructose exposure from high fructose corn syrup consumption may both modulate paraoxinase or PON1 gene expression with a reduction of this paraoxinase activity, remember the one enzyme that deactivates nerve toxins activity, there's a potential for increasing homocysteine expression with a reduction in the PON1 activity peroxidase. There is a potential for increasing homocysteine levels which are associated with genome-wide DNA hypomethylation that may carry over from one generation to the next, affecting both neural development and autism prevalence. So think of it this way. If you want to screw up an entire civilization, one generation at a time, or many generations to come, add a little bit of high fructose corn syrup. So, if that is not warning enough to start avoiding the, self, the stuff, then you may have been taken out by HFCS yourself. Again, this is Ralph. Another issue of the health video version of the health research report, 11th January. 2013 and as always I am glad that you listened to the whole thing. Catch you guys next week. Bye.